Science will always push the limits of our understanding. Humanity is on a quest to expand our knowledge, to dig deeper, to look further, and to uncover the truth of reality. For generations, religious teachings once held to the belief that Earth was only a few thousand years old. With the rise and study of evolution and geology, a consensus emerged that our planet was actually millions of years older. By the 1920s, radiometric dating would lead to the current understanding that Earth is 4.55 billion years old. But where did the Earth come from? In the same decade, a Belgian priest named Georges Lemaitre introduced the Big Bang Theory, in which he theorized that the universe began from a single primordial atom. The idea received a major boost from Edwin Hubble's observations that galaxies across the cosmos are speeding away from us in all directions, as well from the 1960s discovery of cosmic microwave radiation. But where did the Big Bang come from? What happened before the Big Bang, which occurred 13.8 billion years ago? Someday we might know the answer, and once we have the answer, the next logical question will be, what came before that? Sacred geometry reverse engineers our method of scientific exploration. It does so by starting with the logical beginning of everything, which is nothing. Before there was something, there was nothing. The universe was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The first thing to come into existence was a point. Before anything could be, it has to start with a point. A point occupies no space, it has no dimensions. It's so small it can't be measured, yet it encompasses everything within it. You could say this point is spirit. And what is the first thing that spirit does? It becomes conscious, it becomes aware. 360 degrees of awareness in the vast emptiness of the void. The ancient Egyptians believed that this innate aspect of consciousness is what sparked the process of creation. Then what did spirit do? The only thing it could do, it moved. The first three lines of Genesis in the King James Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now, interpretations of the Bible have varied a lot over time, but the important thing to note here is that movement happened before there was light. From the vantage of pure physics or mathematics, motion is impossible in a void. You can't go anywhere, or fall, or rotate. There's just infinite emptiness in all directions. So in order to move, you need something in relation to move to. Before there was light, there was movement. Once spirit created a point in space, it was able to move to the edge of its awareness and expand consciousness, creating another circle to form the Vesica Pisces. This football-shaped opening in the middle is the geometric image through which light was created, and it is also the geometric shape through which our eyes receive light. Spirit would continue to expand its awareness, following the Genesis pattern, by moving to each intersection of the circumferences and expanding. The second movement creates the third circle, which forms the Holy Trinity. With each movement, more information unfolds. By the fourth motion, we have moved halfway around the first circle, 180 degrees from the first motion. On the fourth day of Genesis, exactly half of creation was completed. After six movements, six days, a geometric miracle takes place we have a complete pattern, the seed of life. This complete pattern is called the seed of life for it contains the recipe of life and all its potential. 
The second rotation of circles forms a three-dimensional shape. The ancients who were concerned with life and death called this cluster of spheres the egg of life. Your entire existence is dependent on the egg of life structure. Everything about you, from your height to your eye color, was created through the egg of life form. Spirit would continue this pattern with a third rotation. Nineteen circles produces the flower of life, a shape that is found in ancient cultures around the world. From China to Ireland to Egypt to India, they all had some notion of the flower of life. Why is this shape so special? Because the information hidden in the flower of life is so important and so sacred that our ancient ancestors had to keep it secret, which was appropriate at that time. However, now we either use the information or fall further into darkness. When the flower of life is extended out and all the circles are completed, the fruit of life is revealed. This is the secret. Out of the flower comes the fruit. The fruit of life is an entirely feminine shape. Curved lines are feminine. They represent formlessness and emotion. Once we add masculine energy or lines, the formless begins to take shape. This is Metatron's cube and it contains the fabric of reality because out of this shape we get the platonic solids. Platonic solids have faces that are all the same size, edges that are all the same length, angles that are all the same degree. And if put into a sphere, all points will touch the edge of the sphere. These shapes were studied in ancient times by the Egyptians who passed the knowledge to the Greeks where Pythagoras would study them and later Plato which is where we get the name Platonic. There are five Platonic solids, the cube, the tetrahedron, the octahedron, the isosahedron, and the pentagonal dodecahedron. Earth, air, fire, water, and ether or prana. Each platonic solid corresponds to a different element and every element of the periodic table has a geometric relation to one of the platonic solids. From the motion of atoms, to molecules, to viruses, to snowflakes, to the shape of sound, to the orbits of the planets in our solar system, everything stems from this basic geometric information system. And it all starts with spirit. Looking at ancient myths and religious teachings in a metaphorical sense and less in a literal materialistic sense will allow us to decipher the encoded wisdom and may perhaps serve to bridge the divide between spirit and science. As above, so below. There's as much greater than us than there is lesser than us. There's as much outside us as there is within. Everything above us and everything below us is constructed from geometric relationships. When we study sacred geometry, we begin to understand our place in the universe. All this expansion of consciousness, all this curious exploration is really about finding out who we are. We are a mystery to ourselves and to uncover where we came from is to know ourselves on the deepest level. Everything from the smallest particle to the biggest star is connected and you are at the absolute center of it all. Philosophy is written in this grand book, the universe, which stands continually open to our gaze. But the book cannot be understood unless one first learns to comprehend the language and read the letters in which it's composed. It is written in the language of mathematics and its characters are triangles, circles, and other geometric figures without which it is humanly impossible to understand a single word of it. Without these, one wanders about in a dark labyrinth. Galileo Galilee Today's video is sponsored by MSI. The Golden Ratio describes predictable patterns on everything from atoms to huge stars in the sky. The ratio is derived from something called the Fibonacci sequence, named after its Italian founder, Leonardo Fibonacci. In the sequence, each number is simply the sum of the two preceding numbers, 1, 2, 3, 
5, 8, 13, etc. The simple sequence produces an amazing proportion of 1.618, which is known by many other names. The golden ratio, the golden mean, phi, and the divine proportion, among others. So why is this number so important? Well, almost everything has dimensional properties that adhere to the ratio of 1.618, so it seems to have a fundamental function for the building blocks of nature. For billions of years, life on Earth has evolved around this proportion to maintain balance and harmony. Our ancient ancestors incorporated the golden ratio into their structures and daily lives. And today, our best technology continues this evolution, for it follows the laws of nature to design user experience, enhance aesthetics, and efficiency.